Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by Ghostbed.com. Woo! Tangerine. Ooh, tangerine for Danthony today. Tangerine dream. Isn't Sometimes that something? you dig your dirty little hand inside the white claw box and you come out with magic. He came out with a tangerine. Yeah. He did. It's. I mean, that the number two uh, uh, assort, assorted pack is way better. It's like mango, tangerine, watermelon, and lime or lemon. Lemon's better than lime. Yeah. But again, you, you mix should them be, together. Sprite claws. Yeah, you should be making. Everybody in Drinking Bros is making Sprite claws lately. Sprite claws. And then sometimes we reach our hand into the guest bag and we come up with a fucking awesome guest who has not yeah. been on the show before. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. Welcome. The Marine <laughs> Rapper is here. Mm-hmm. Good to see you, buddy. Oh, what's up? It's been a minute. Good to see y'all too. Yeah, what we saw each other in late January or some shit, right? Yeah, man. In late January. Before that, the last time we hung out was uh, right before Range Fifteen came out because we used your song at the yeah. end of the movie. Yeah, like I rap for you and all that stuff, and and then we got in the movie. That was dope. <clears throat> yeah, we go way back. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, now that we've got all these pleasantries out of the way, I'm going to need to ask you for something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I need. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to ask you on behalf of uh, white people to surrender your black card because um, <laughs> it's come to my attention that you're not voting for Joe Biden. So according to him, according to uh, Joe Biden, you're not uh, black. Yeah, you're not black anymore. So I don't know how. I, I don't know what the downstream effects of that are but i know now i need that card so i'm gonna need that <laughs> <laughs> i haven't been told where to send it into so i just i need to find that address just okay. show up to fucking go, go to the uh to biden's house <laughs> yeah you know I, what i mean he's there he's in the basement how funny of a protest would that be if somebody actually made black cards and then like thousands of black dudes just showed up and tossed the cards in his front yard like hey i guess we don't need this anymore thanks. we're all done thanks joe thanks joe uh, you you recently wrote a Joe Biden diss song that that went viral. Yeah, um, it's funny as shit. Let me ask you this: Were you as shocked as we were that Joe Biden got the fucking nomination for the Democratic Party? The most shocked. I was just like, "This is what y'all. This is your best. What? This yeah. is your best nominee? I just didn't get it. There were so many other people you could have picked. You just like." Let me just it's like they put a name in a hat and just like shook it up. I don't know what happened. Well, it's it's the deliberation was, process must have been incredible. It's like, hey, well, here's what we want to do, guys. We don't want another old white man yeah. to fucking lead us into the future. We want a young progressive and like, oh, cool. Hey, I've got this old white man. Yeah. That yeah. says racist shit all the time. You want to use him? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, let's fucking do it, guys. Hell yeah. That's I mean, what the fuck? I don't know how that conversation went, but in my brain, it happened something like that. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. Are you are you typically a Republican voter? Oh, I mean, I no, not really. I have I just have a whole bunch of conservative views and I align with a lot of the conservative views because, you know, military mm-hmm. and, sure. and being in this culture and stuff like that. And it's just like when I started doing my independent research, I'm just like, yo, this dude is racist, yeah. like really <laughs> racist, like racist to me. Like, I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you what I mean. Like, you know, like literally long term, like he's made a tradition out of being racist from segregation all the way to the crime bill, like mm. literally locking black folks up, <clears throat> locking black fathers up and then talking about, oh, you guys don't have any black daddies in the home because you locked them up. Yeah. Like, really? Like, come on. Like, like I, I just don't. I, yeah. So it's just like I started doing my independent research and I realized how corrupt he was and how just racist and I just can't do it. Sure. Uh, let, let me ask you this. Did you vote for Obama? Yes, I did. Okay, yeah. So, okay. So, now here's what makes to be honest makes more sense. Obama was, in my opinion, between him and Romney, probably the better choice, because I think Romney's kind of a chucklehead. Yeah, I do do too. He's he's, Romney is one of those guys that would have given he would have he would have expanded corporate welfare beyond our ability to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm fine punting with that. I was, I think, God, if memory serves me correctly, I was in one of those. States that I was just like, eh, doesn't matter. I don't really care. I lived in California. I don't care about any. Yeah, I was in, I was in California <laughs> yeah. too, where I was like, Obama's going to win. It didn't matter. So I don't think I voted actually in that. I one. voted for myself. Yeah, but it makes sense. Is it look as a person of color that you would go out and vote for Obama, the first black president, regardless of party? That makes sense because you want to see history get made. Yeah. When and also he's a exactly. like regardless of his politics and how close you come with him, uh, belief wise, he's at least a. 
he seems like a, a decent dude. Decent dude. And, the, the, and at the part. time he ran in 2008, he was a phenomenon, man. <clears throat> yeah. he, he was like Trump was in 2016. There was something electric in the air, and you knew that they were going to get in. Um, when 2016 popped up for you then, did you go Hillary or did you go Trump? Um, I did not go Trump at that time. No. No, yeah. I didn't because yeah. I just didn't understand what was going on. And it didn't seem like, especially because in the black community, unfortunately there's this like stigma because it's kind of like um you have to vote democrat vote democrat no matter who blue right. no matter who because you're being a sellout if you vote for, for the other party you have to vote democrat and then i was just like why 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 and i kept on digging and i was just like yo this party is racist kkk segregation after i found out more and more <laughs> and more and then rubbing elbows with kkk leaders and stuff like that that i found out after the fact you mean like robert like, bird why am i just going with the crowd yes robert like, bird. what he was in, like he was in he was in the congress for ever mm-hmm. and was an open clan member yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah like yeah. what the fuck yeah, dude? david duke there's a bunch of those guys well he wasn't a member of congress though i think he was the governor if, if memory serves me correctly uh, I don't know. Still an elected official. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> which is always strange, but uh, you know we hear it all the time. That uh, hey man, like like Biden said, if if you're not black, if you're voting for Trump, and it's like, why in your opinion do, do the Democrats automatically assume that every black person should vote Democratic? Because they prey on black people's suffering. They they wouldn't have any movement. They wouldn't have any propaganda they wouldn't have any steam at all because they love the fact that we're oppressed because they wouldn't have no subject matter right when they go to the when they go to campaign they go hey you guys are oppressed we're going to give you all these freebies and these handouts and and keep you out of you know oppression and all of that and but i'm just like but you're just keeping us in the same place you don't want to see us come up i don't get it like you keep you keep putting these liquor stores and and all this fast food and all these Planned Parenthoods in our neighborhood, but you say you want us to come up, but you're just trying to keep us in the hood to kill ourselves and then say that you're going to fix our problems, but you never have. Yeah. Joe Biden has been in government for about 40 years and he hasn't done it. So 47, like, yeah. They want, they pray off of 20, yeah, they prey off of our oppression as black people. You know, Dan says off this, of all, our suffering. Dan says this all the time that, yeah. uh, <clears throat> you know, the Democratic Party just wants you to. St- Black people to suck off the government teat. That way, you're always dependent upon the government. Well, Therefore, you always have to vote for yeah. them in every election. It's uh, like uh, it's like cancer, right? Like, what, how are you going to make if if you came up with a cure for cancer today and it cost ten bucks? The the big pharmaceutical industry would lose their. They would murder you to keep that information from getting out. Yeah, because their business would be ruined mm-hmm. by that information. But it would be the right and ethical thing to do. Jonas Salk sold his. He sold the cure for polio. Or the vaccine for polio for, I think nine thousand dollars, something like that. Right. The the whole That's thing it. sold it to the government. Here it is. Let the people use it. Nine grand, and that just covered his lab expenses. He didn't make a profit off of it. That's what a scientist does. These people are, are cunts, yeah. frankly. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, if you keep people on the tit, if you keep people needing the treatment and never give them the cure, then you are a piece of shit. You're, yeah. you're profiting off the suffering of human beings. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's, that's how is that not like slavery? Like, how, how are you going to claim some fucking moral high ground because you think these people are insensitive to stuff? No, you actually created and perpetuate the problem. Republicans, like I've said this before, Republicans at least had <clears throat> the common decency to ignore the problem and not make it worse. The Democrats have just been like, you're a spike in the ground. They just keep hitting you. They show up once a year tell you how great they are and, and hand you a couple yeah. things and just hammer you further into the ground once a year. Yeah. Is that the way, is that the way you're starting to feel now? Yeah. I, I mean, after I done my research, I'm just like, you guys are just trying to keep us neutral and, and you keep on talking, telling us to shut up and stuff like that. And I don't want to shut up. I want to do my own research. I want to be independent. Mm. I want to grow financially, mentally all that and it was right exactly what you said it's a mental type of slavery they want you to think the same as them and i'm just like are you serious why would you want me to think the same as you i don't want anybody to think the same as me i want everybody to be an individual and i want to grow and come up let me give you a little background so my family was on welfare section eight Mm -hmm. so growing up so mom single mother right uh welfare government cheese literally had to spend over folks spend we had to spend the night over folks house because 
we didn't have water sometimes and we'd spend a night over their house just to take a clean shower, things like that, right? Mm-hmm. So my mom used the government programs, welfare, section eight as a stepping stool. And she was just like, when you turn 18, you will go to the military, you'll get a job, you're gonna do something. My son will not be not successful, right? And she has five kids. Now, you know, two-time war veteran me, my brother's a doctor, my sister, she actually was leading the effort for fabricating the metal pieces that were in the uh, the medical mask. So mm. she provided for the medical officials. My brother is a personal trainer and a fitness coach, as well as my other brothers going to school for computer science. And we all came from Section 8 and welfare. But my mom said, hey, I do not want to see you guys in the same spot I am. I'm here and I'm using this program to give you guys a leg up. And that's what she did. That's what... The, this is what the programs are set up for. They're set up just so you can get on your feet and then get off of them. I've seen a lot of Democrats, a lot of candidates, they want us to stay on them. I don't want to do that. And now me, I'm loud and I'm I'm outspoken and I'm just like, everybody, we need to get off of this. We need to move forward. We need to be independent. We need to make our own money and things like that. But they don't want to do that. They don't want to see us do that. They want to save mentality because they profit off of black people's pain yeah it's true i mean i like we we hear all this shit and we have heard all this shit for the last 30 years or so about class warfare there's a real easy solution to that like eliminate the idea of class in the first place like put everybody on the same playing field i'm not talking about socialism i'm talking about stop this bullshit and give people the actual opportunity for upward mobility like you're talking about it there's no it is very easy to settle into that lifestyle and never get out of it. Like if, if you don't believe that, think about it. You think you're fucking somehow holier than, than that, than letting that happen to you. Think about the last diet you tried and mm-hmm. how quickly you fell off of that shit and got back to your old fucking behavior. Right. Being a human being is not always easy. I think life per, is, is pretty simple if you follow the right guidelines, but being like living your life from day to day can be very difficult and when you don't see a way out, people turn like that's why there's no there's no greater factor associated with crime than poverty ever in human history. I'm not talking about America. I'm talking about all of human history. That's the case. Um, and this is just like all these things stem from the same shit. And it's that that community has largely been stolen from and ignored. One of the two things. Right. <clears throat> like yep. the, here's this is why I've been hammering Republicans so much lately. The Democrats aren't even worth talking about. They're, they're, they're just fleecing the black community. That's all they're doing. P- pretending to give them stuff, but never actually helping them at all. And running on that as a campaign platform, which is fucking crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but Republicans have the solution, in my opinion. Not neocons, but Republicans do. The idea of self-entrepreneurship. Going to school, all this stuff. That creating is a solution. business, creating a yeah. life for yourself. And they haven't... They haven't taken advantage of, like, if you want to win elections, you're Republicans right now and you want to win elections. The only reason Democrats can win elections is because of urban centers mm-hmm. that, that they prey on, like what we're talking about right now. Take that fucking tool out of their toolbox. Go to the black communities and spend the billions of dollars that we've robbed from them, the hundreds of billions that we've robbed from them, creating businesses and careers instead of just jobs and welfare. You do that. In fucking 15 years, you own that fucking vote. Yeah. Into perpetuity at that point. And the Democrat, with their current ideology, could never win again. They would have to change rapidly to ever win another election. And that's 13%. That's 13% of our country. Um, What do your black friends say to you when you say, hey, man, I'm not voting Democrat or I don't believe in the same things you do and blah, blah, blah? (laughs) I have to imagine there's some backlash. Man. Oh, like ever since the president retweeted me and I've just been getting all types of interview requests and stuff like that. Um, man, like literally people have been calling me up like personal, Mm -hmm. like cell phone calls, like, Hey bro, what's going on? Are you okay? (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. (laughs) I'm just like, woke. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm just not, I did my independent research. I looked into things. I saw the affiliations that certain people have with certain things and, and, I have different definitions for things. If I go Black Lives Matter, I don't mean the organization. I don't mean the hashtag. I mean, if I say Black Lives Matter, I mean, I called my mom today. It yeah, means yeah, yeah. I did something for my other. You mm. feel me? <clears throat> like, it means I did something for my black friend. So I'm changing the whole dialogue so they don't know what to do because I add definition to things. And people are like, well, I didn't think about it like that. But uh, you're 
you're braver than me because I don't want to stick my neck out there and I don't want other black people to think that I'm a sellout. But ever since that point, like other black people have been calling me all types of names, like all types of racial slurs. I actually had one of the top um, publications actually do a whole smear article on me and they mm. used the racial slur coon there, right? And then I did a diss rap to them and they changed their whole article. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I was just like, because she she the the lady who did the uh, article on me she went under a male pen name so i was like let me do let me look up this name i looked up the name and everything and i found out it was a female and i found out all her information and i put in like all these veterans were attacking the magazine and and then they backed off but yeah i've been getting a lot of flack from the black community because they don't understand what's going on um with like my switch my like pivot they're like, hey, like you seem like a good guy. Like, why would you vote for Trump and this and that? And I've heard he's a mean guy. He says mean things and and this and that. It's like, it's not that. Why would I vote for Trump? Why would you vote for Biden who locked up y'all daddies and y'all uncles? Why yeah. would you vote for somebody who made black people walk to school and white people ride in the bus? Why would you vote for that? Why would you vote for somebody who at that pool at that press conference when they were honoring Biden, he told the black kids to shut up. But when it comes to him around white kids, he's touching on and sniffing them. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you guys not paying attention? You know, like, I don't get it. So I'm just like, my, my job is education through entertainment. Mm. Education yeah, we're, we're pretty much the same. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, a lot of people don't understand two things. One, Biden is the author of the crime bill. He wrote it. Mm -hmm. He didn't sponsor it, That's but he's the guy that wrote the goddamn thing. Right. And some of the provisions in it, one of them is, uh, and this is debatable, I guess, but the... the uh, assault weapon ban mm -hmm. was in there and every major study ever done showed that that solved no crime at all it didn't stop shit and now they're trying to do it again right yeah so you know that like if, if somebody's trying to do something they say well it's about this it's not about taking your guns away it's about safety and blah 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 well all the rec records show that that didn't do shit for safety so yeah you are just trying to take the guns away so yeah. get fucked with that that one is debatable i guess depending on where you fall on, on two-way and stuff but the bigger part of it is like one of the biggest provisions in the bill, maybe not the largest text wise, but one of the most impactful was that they eliminated the program that allowed people that are incarcerated to use Pell Grants to get higher education while they're in prison so they could actually fucking reform themselves, get an education and a career afterwards. Instead, no. Like what are your options when you get out and you have fucking jail time? They're not very good. So what is the, what is the purpose of jail exactly? To punish people? I mean, what the fuck? Like, are we actually trying to integrate people back into society? Or if otherwise, let's just ship them off to Australia and make a new Australia. Yeah, make you know a new country. Yeah. Like, what's, no. the, what's the fucking point of, of taking people, putting them in this fucking animal farm, as, as we like to call it, and just let, yep. them, let them get yep. worse and worse and worse over the years, not letting them get educated now, then they just come out with no options. What the fuck do you think they're going to do? Yeah. Jesus Christ, man. Uh, what was they're going to out like they're going to wild out like any other yeah. human. And then you wonder why there's a lot of uh, crime and things like that because they have no other option. They can't get a job, so they have to do illegal stuff that keeps them in the system. People don't understand that because of the social construct of race and everything that's yeah. going, going on. Now they get stuck in a, like a, a loophole that they – and then they go – then Democrats goes, hey, listen, uh, I know you, your people are stuck in a hole oh, because you put us there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Man, I mean it's, it's insane to me that <clears> – I guess it's not really insane because – ideas like that become so pervasive like i don't think i grew up in a black neighborhood for a while when i was a kid for a good while all my friends are black so i understand the i like yeah a lot of black people are super scared of dogs you either own pet bulls or you're super scared of dogs it's one of the two um yep. and it's it has to do with their dads and grandfathers getting chased by police who had like not not when they were committing crimes when they were protesting in the streets of Chicago having fucking German shepherds attack them and fucking fire hoses blasting on them so they tell their kids like hey we don't fuck with dogs dogs are they'll fuck you up right those kind of ideas become super pervasive through a community fear of the police becomes very pervasive after years and years of abuse it just happens like that so when someone gets shot unarmed by cops and it's a black guy of course, their first reaction is going to be that. Of why would it not be? Right. Like, it has to be that. That's just the way your fucking brain works. Now, it takes a better type of person to step away from that situation and see it for what it is sometimes. Because sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's just bad luck or bad acting or whatever you want to call it. Um, 
but it takes something more to do that. But you can't expect that of the average person. This is not how people think. Like, we all have dumb beliefs that came from our parents. And maybe we're aware of them now. We try to shed that stuff to mm-hmm. some degree, but we still believe some stupid shit. Everybody does. Oh, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Um, let me ask you this. What was it like to wake up and see that the president had retweeted your video? <laughs> That's got to be surreal. <laughs> Bro, oh, I don't even. I, I just, I'm still processing it. Like, still. Like, I don't even. I don't even. I, it still hasn't hit me like honest to be honest everybody else is hype for me and i'm just like i've been doing i've been doing this for years it just happened that he shared it you know i've done a lot of little raps here and there and i've done stuff for jared and and other drinking bros and stuff like that and then you know performances and stuff and then finally hit so it's just oh like like yeah no no words no words at all yeah man because uh you you've been at this for a very very long time man and I, look we've always been a fan we reached out and said hey we're doing this all veteran movie it would be awesome to have your song at the end of the movie. You were gracious enough to do it. And uh, I, I'm amped. I was amped to see that the president had retweeted you. And, and you're getting some of the recognition that you deserve. What made you get into rap Appreciate in the it. first place? Uh, were you rapping while you were in the Marine Corps? I started, I started rapping actually a little bit before the Marine Corps. Um, there was a big like freestyle battle rap insurgents, you know, with NM and all the Notorious B.I.G. and mm-hmm. all that stuff out. Uh, I, I learned about hip hop late. I gr- actually grew up off of rock music because I grew up in California. So I listened to like Nirvana, mm-hmm. Alice in Chains, Perfect Circle, um, things like that. I would listen to that. And then when I was 18, one of my mom's friends came over and she said, hey, you're, up, you're out here skateboarding and listening to rock music. Hey, do you listen to any rap? And I was like, no. She's like, but you're black. And I'm like, what? And I was like, what does that have anything to do with it? She's like, here's a CD of Notorious B.I.G. Um, listen to that. And then that changed my whole life. And I started listening to rap. And then I started freestyle battling and doing a whole bunch of like dissing and stuff like that. Mm. But then <clears throat> after a while, I had to get a job. And I was like, you want to get a job because you're going to be a successful um so <laughs> what i did was i got the hell out i got a job i worked at taco bell for i, w- I worked at taco bell for a while as a rapper like wrapping up tacos and then i was just like this ain't gonna work and then <laughs> i went to the marine corps <laughs> yeah i went to the marine corps and uh i did a little rap in there but i totally like was at that point and i put everything on the back burner because i was in iraq and afghanistan mm. you can't really rap there <clears throat> Um, but then I started picking up rap, uh, two years before I got out and then I used the GI bill and I went to music school and learned how to record myself. And then, then I started getting, uh, viral attention on social media and the rest is history. That's amazing, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's amazing. Look, I'm super amped that all of this is happening to you. I know you're super busy and you got a bunch of interviews and all that stuff. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by drinking bros podcast Mm -hmm. today. Tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Um, so they can follow all of your videos. Cause you, you rap a lot. Like you've got a ton a of lot. videos out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, everybody, you can find me at the Marine rapper everywhere. The, the, I keep it simple. So I was at, taught by the military. Keep it simple at, at the Marine rapper. You can find me ever. So, all right. So go to at the Marine rapper on, uh, Instagram, everywhere. Twitter, everywhere. You can where, find the Marine rapper. Where do you, you where do you sell most of your tunes? Is it on this man? Uh, yeah, iTunes it, or Spotify? Where do you, are you streaming do? everywhere? You can Google me. Like I'm streaming everywhere. I'm streaming on Spotify, iTunes, mm. Google, anything. If you put in the Marine Rapper, you'll you'll find me. So awesome, awesome. Well, hey, thanks for joining us today. Congratulations on your success, mm-hmm. and uh, let's get together after after the election on November third. Come back on the show. Actually, we'll you see what come, happens. We're doing an election party in Austin. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're doing a we are we're doing a live show uh, all night for the election in yeah, Austin, Texas. Danny, uh, I think Danny Warstown from Asking Alexandria is going to be there, and J- me, us, and Jared will be there. So oh, snap. yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, so out. we're gonna have some people performing and all that stuff. Oh. So if you're in Austin, man, we'd love to have you. Yeah, yeah. My my brother, my brother is actually a professor in austin oh um, shit so that's cool they yeah, cool. should he, come out he, there he's a professor at ut so oh perfect dude oh, yeah. him, him and him and mcconaughey co-professors yeah man colleagues he's the uh professor you know of you know matthew science. mcconaughey uh like took a job as a professor of film or whatever just he's so there, he yeah. could sit in the student and teacher section at the ut games Fucking greatest flex of all time, yeah. McConaughey. that's crazy the guy's the best dude i saw i saw ross you did i saw ross oh, you yeah. did that like rolling 
the booger thing. Now the, the Lincoln uh, rolling the joint. The Lincoln rolling the joint, my man. Hey, you know what I'm thinking hey. about when I'm driving this car, man. I'm thinking about how much I'm getting paid right now. I'm the minister <laughs> of culture in uh, Austin. Texas. The first, you know, I had seen a lot of his movies, but the first time I actually saw him ta- speaking as himself, I think it was on Conan O'Brien show uh-huh. in like 1993 or four, and he was talking about, yeah, man, I got a rattle, big rattlesnake pit in my backyard, and and nobody knew what to say. He's like, why you have children? Why? Yeah. Like you've got. Why do you have a rattlesnake pit? It's like, oh, it's like 20 feet deep. Like, that doesn't make it better, bitch. Yeah. You just made it. Now they're going to fall, get injured, then get bit to death by snakes. Why? What are you doing to your ah, children? He's fine. He's got well, a, they're all alive. He's I mean, got a look, brother named Rooster. He's good to go. He's, his child retention rate is way higher than Eric Clapton's. <laughs> Man, that is Dan Holloway, ladies and gentlemen. That one's on uh, me. Feel Sorry free to follow that. Dan Holloway on Instagram <laughs> Sorry about for that. all that of terrible. that hate mail. That was terrible. Uh, and follow at the Marine Rapper uh, on all of the socials. Thank you for being here, sir. And uh, please come down and do our election show on November 3rd. No doubt. I'll holla at y'all later. All right, awesome, see you, man. Buddy. Take care. I love that guy, man. Yeah, he's a good dude. In he's general, he's very unbelievably positive. Very, he's he is very positive. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know why. Life, <laughs> life is bullshit. Yeah, I know. Um, no, he's yeah, he's a good dude. He's super smart and thoughtful. Anybody that can, uh, like, against the pressure that he would be under from his own family, maybe I don't know. But as family, a bla- friends, friends for sure. As a black person in America, and 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 going from. Democrat to Republican. And again, I don't think he's Republican. I just think he identifies more with conservatism, particularly when it comes to economics. And he's so turned off by the Democratic Party for their history of racist mm-hmm. bullshit. Um, <clears throat> and I like when people are honest like that of like, hey, man, yeah, I, I voted for Obama. And I went out and voted for him twice. Like, yeah. if you think about it, right, let's say it was the roles were reversed and a white guy had never <laughs> been elected as president. I don't give a shit which party it was. Mm. I would vote for them to see it happen and see if there could be some form of change and see one of my own people get in there. And I think a lot of times on this show and others, uh, people get confused of like, oh, well, you know, if you're if you talk positive about another party or a person or a president, uh, that means you don't like this other thing. No, that's not true. No, it's Um, dumb. That 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 attitude is dumb. Like somebody commented on one of our YouTube or uh, somebody left a review actually on uh, iTunes. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't remember exactly what it said, but it was something to the effect of, you used to like this show, but now they'd like go far right politically. And like, what the fuck are you talking about? Have you listened to any of the shows? Yeah. That's how you know. Like if somebody shows up, uh, if somebody shows up and gives a review of your company, but they're not describing the products correctly, they're just a cunt. They've never actually used the product before. Right, right. Like you sell tennis balls. They're like, they were really, uh, they were really soft and squishy. I was expecting a little bit more out of my ball, my <laughs> billiard balls. Like, well, they're not billiard balls, you idiot. Uh, and we are not far right. As a yeah, fact. go go into iTunes, write some reviews, smash yeah, do that, that guy down. But uh, <clears throat> we try to keep it fair and, and across the board and what we believe and who we are as people. Um, we don't really veer too much off of that. And uh, you know, to that point, since we were talking about the election and whatnot, um, the new poll just dropped right now from the New York Times. Mm. Um, and it says uh, Biden has taken a 14 point lead, according <laughs> to the New York Times, it says that voters are rejecting <laughs> Trump on virus and race. Uh, I will say this as a as a Trump guy and a Trump supporter. Um, I have not been personally particularly happy with the way he's handled the virus and the, ra- the race relation stuff yeah. that's been going on right now. Um, I think part of it is because Biden is missing. He's, he's hiding in a basement. The hiding Biden thing is real. Um, so all you're hearing is Trump instead of two sides. Although he did agree to three debates. debates he did, right? he did yeah. So you were, you were worried about that. <laughs> I was. You, you yeah. thought there's no way. And I was like. I don't know. He doesn't eh. have anything to gain by doing those debates. What I, he's going to get fucking wrecked in, in our history. I, like, I can't remember presidents not debating. No, of course times. not. But Hillary is actually a pretty good debater. Yes. Uh, and he, he fucking lit her ass on fire. And yeah. it didn't matter if he, what he was saying was even true or not. No, he is no. just fucking if you're if you're quick and relentless enough, you can win a debate even if you're on the wrong side. It's and just about Joe Biden a has a couple good yeah. sound bites. Yep. You know? Joe Biden has no chance at all. He's going to he's going to like. Do that yeah, over yeah. and over and over again, yeah. right? oh, no, 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 no. or say things that aren't like going on, mm-hmm. like uh, yeah, uh, this has been a tough Senate run. Like, so you're running for president? Like, yeah, president run. Yeah, run running for it. Yep. I'm running for it. Joe Biden is running for it. Yeah. I am. 
And that's how that conversation would go. And everybody like, oh, shit. Because <laughs> um, a lot of people asked, they said, well, look, Joe, Joe Biden did pretty well in the debates uh, during the primaries. Uh, only the last one, really. R- right. But he was able to hold it together. And, and I will say this. When you have 12 candidates on a yeah, stage. Yeah, it's way different. It's way different than one-on-one for two, he two probably, and a half hours. He probably spoke for a total of like, what, 10 to 15 minutes? 14 minutes, minutes maybe, something was, like yeah. that. So yeah. it's like... Uh, that versus an hour and a half long where you're speaking for 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. That's a lot more time. Plus, you're going back and forth with individuals at that point. There's no fucking crowd to hide in. It's just two dudes on stage. I know, in front of the world. Uh, and I, everybody's amped for these to start. I believe the first one is in August. I think so we're coming I, up on it. I keep saying this over and over. I know it'll never happen, but I just want to see like WrestleMania. Uh, uh, on the stage? Yeah, I like put all the. There's no primaries. There's no parties or any of that shit. Everybody that wants to run for president shows up, uh-huh. and you have to wrestle. <laughs> and whoever wins becomes a president. Well, according to Ted Cruz, Jim Jordan would win then. You know, uh, was yeah. he a wrestler for Iowa? Or I don't. I don't know, like but like somebody wants to wrestle Ted Cruz now. I think. Yeah. Who was it? Um, shit. Was it a rapper or something? It no, was, it's uh, was Ron a f- Perlman, I think. Hellboy. Oh, Ron Perlman. Yeah, Hellboy, that's yeah. right. Yeah, he's uh, he's a decent sized dude, but he's like he's a, in real he's, life, he's a really big fucking yeah, dude. He's a big guy. It he's, would shock you uh, if you met him in real life. You'd be like, oh shit, yeah, what's Ron he like, Perlman's si- a big he's guy. He's like six two, like boxy. He's, too. About he's got big two, shoulders. Yeah, he's about two inches taller than me, and probably, probably another six, fucking twenty five. I would say six five. Yeah, man, somewhere in there. Um, he's a big dude, a uh, real big dude. But uh, he's a pussy though. You know, who who fucking knows? I think he lived that <clears throat> character on Sons of Anarchy and made it his own. Now, is that's what people expect out of? Yeah, you? but you can't Happens like a lot. You can you can put on uh, you can put on the clothes, man. But that doesn't make you actually <laughs> tough. No, he his. I'm pretty sure his <laughs> parents were actors too. So he's been like. He came up. He's in that been stuff in the business, yeah, for right. his entire, life. entire he is, life. He's never been in a real fight in his life. Yeah, but what happens is when you play such a cool role like that, um, and everybody loves you for it, and it's like, all right, cool, man. It's funner to be this person in real life than I actually am, and that's that's what happens. A lot of it, like Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was never wearing scarves and fucking mascara and, and crazy shit. Does anybody like him though? Uh, yeah, I think like some people yeah. feel kind of sad for him now after we found out how crazy Amber heard or heard or whatever. How do you say Dude, her name? Is? She just got a fucking. She is nuts. She's nuts, but she just got a huge campaign. She's like the, uh, you know, whatever that makeup is, the glamorized or the the hair thing. Uh, she's I the girl for it in the commercial. So <laughs> that's a big gig. Uh, so it is for somebody that's give a about to get fucking sued. Like she's already crazy. getting sued. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's already going through it. Uh, no one's suing our sponsors, though, D'Anthony. Well. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. No AIDS or coronavirus on any of their beds. Any of the mattresses. Yep. They ship it to you in a box. It is AIDS and coronavirus free. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today where everything is 25% off. Mattresses, sheets, pillows, adjustable bases. You name it. It's 25% off. If you order a mattress right now, you get two free pillows with it. No one is doing that except for ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And as always, they get a 36 month pay as you go program. No interest, no interest for three years. Knocks that shit down to like 25 bucks. So you can load up uh, and, and live it out cheaply. It's, I mean, that's the cost of like two apps, dude. If you got like HBO and fucking Netflix, or you can sleep in a nice mattress, your call. Or you can do all of them. You can fuck. And just watch, have make a little baby while you watch Netflix. Again, if you can prove to me that you. Conceived yep. on a ghost bed mm-hmm. and then had a child. I need the child to go to full term. So don't just like get pregnant and get an abortion. Although yeah. that would be kind of funny to be honest to me. I know I'm fucked in the head. But anyways, Dan, yeah. if you could prove that you conceived your child on a ghost bed, I will fucking buy you a ghost bed. Yes. Yeah, just send the video into at Dan Holloway on Instagram. Yep. He will review it. <clears throat> I need to see the cream pie. And I will have to be to... honest, because how else would you really know? You're not going Because I've watched enough porn to know. That people fake like those those porn videos where it's like a series mm-hmm. of different videos like mm-hmm. oh he starts with oh first mom touches his dick then stepmom fucking jacks him off then she sucks his dick and yeah. then he fucks him like that'll happen within the course of like two hours that whole thing was shot he didn't come yeah. four times in a day I yeah. get that you're 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 faking it right sure if you try to fake me on this I will hunt you down and do unspeakable things to you okay yeah. and that baby also belongs to me yep. So, case, so when you send in your video that you made on the ghost bed, just remember, Dan will 
go through it for hours and hours on end, and then I will second it and let, yeah. let you know that yeah. it's fair and true, and then <clears throat> Ghostbed will give you a free bed. And if again, if it's not, was conceived you on. try to trick me, I swear to God. Yeah. Muerte. That's Spanish for death. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, D'Anthony, we got... Ooh. Wait, when is this going live? Ooh. Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. Let's go live on Tuesday. Let's see. Uh, we, we got liquid IV. Oh, yeah. Let's do, let's do liquid IV. Boom. We're drinking it today. I've been drinking the fucking gallons worth. It's it's so hot out, dude. I've, I feel dehydrated. I feel dehydrated. You're not drinking enough White Claw, probably. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, but I'm definitely drinking enough liquid IV dot com to hydrate myself um it's a packet man yeah they, they come in these fucking things right here Boom. They, they sent us a bunch but i literally i've, uh, I've two, crushed all of them. like two days two ago i just bought like 150 bucks like th- three or four months worth i, I used my own promo code on there though yeah fuck yeah, yeah. Okay, I did. look here it is it's a it, it's a little <laughs> pouch Boom, you pour it in water, you're good to go um this rehydrates you three times faster so you could drink one of these 12 ounce bottles of water or you can put some liquid IV in it it's the same as getting three <laughs> and uh everybody who's had this now since they've been a sponsor is like holy shit dude fucking i feel so much better i can't believe it and i was like man here's how i found it because i reached out to them and i was like dude i want to be a sponsor I drink this fucking shit every day mm-hmm. it was at nick's house we've partied with nick uh, down <laughs> in florida at the florida florida state game yep he has it so like he goes dude if you if you're going hard one night mm-hmm. pop one of these the next morning and get rid of a hangover and i was like all right cool Boom, popped in the liquid IV, and I was like, holy shit, I feel great. Ever since then, I've been drinking these goddamn things every day. So I feel great. Uh, go to liquidiv.com. Use the promo code DRINKINGBROS, <coughs> and that is going to get you 25% off. Um, and you're going to get the same boxes that you see in Whole Foods and Target and all that other shit, and they'll just ship it right to your house. You can get bigger boxes. You can get the goddamn pouches that have, like, hundreds of them in there. Yeah. Um, it's great. <clears throat> so you just put one stick in a 16-ounce thing of water, and you're good to go, man. It's got more vitamin C and orange, and it's uh, and as much potassium as a banana in this shit. It'll hydrate you real fucking quick, man. And these guys have been donating about, I think, 2.3 million servings uh, to the COVID response and all mm-hmm. this shit. So uh, they're just great people in general. Yeah, I know guys. Drinking Broettes had the president <laughs> on. We love liquidiv.com. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you 25% off. Uh, last but not least, D'Anthony. You want to go honey? Yeah. Because I've been honey. I've been using it. It's an interesting name for a company. I don't know why they named it that because I haven't really looked into it, to be honest. I you. first saw it on Caller Daddy. Like uh, yeah, on their logo. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're the yeah. They're, so let's, let's get into what they are. Yeah. So uh, it's basically a browser extension. Mm-hmm. So it runs in the background on your Internet Explorer, or Chrome, or Edge, or whatever the fuck you have, uh, Safari, whatever you're using. Yeah. And anytime you go to a site, that's registered with Honey, which is like hundreds of thousands of sites, it automatically finds the deals for that site. And when you go to your cart, like it applies, the, it makes sure that you actually use the fucking coupon. There, there will be a little fucking thing at checkout because I've used it a bunch now. There's a thing at checkout and it says apply coupons and it'll show you the coupons that's available and you just hit apply and it fucking saves you money every single time. This yeah. is the best invention of all time because I am a serial online shopper. Yes. How how did no one come up with this is what I don't understand. I don't know, man. I, d- I honestly don't know. I've heard of people talking about some kind of aggregator for coupons that in- integrated with, with stuff before, but nobody's ever been able to develop it correctly, but they finally fucking did it. This this thing, they have, uh, there's 30,000 stores, uh-huh. including like Walmart, Forever 21, like if you're shopping for your girlfriend or wife or some shit. Yeah. Uh, Lululemon, again, if you're shopping for your wife or yourself, I have, this is Lululemon actually, this shirt is. Um, is it really? They have the most comfortable shit yeah, yeah, yeah. of all time. I'm a big fan of them. Um, uh, uh, They're not fucking, a sponsor, but they, no, they, they should, should be. be yeah. <clears throat> uh, New egg. If you're buying computer parts and shit like that, it, there's just like it's it's not like any Anything. kind of genre. It's not just clothes. It's not just food. It's not just tech. It's everything. Everything. Thirty thousand different websites, and it's the most. It's the biggest websites on the planet. Yep. That they're using here. I just bought some shit from. Uh, I think it was Optics Planet. Mm-hmm. I bought some stuff for one of my guns and. Yep. Coupon pops up. Click. Boom. Put it in there. Promo code. I, I Dude, again, I don't know how anybody hasn't done this yet. They've got over 17 million members and $2 billion in savings right now. Yeah. All it is, man, it, it's, it's literally. It's like a background it, it app. It sucks up all the promo codes yeah. for all your favorite websites. It costs you it's, zero dollars. Zero dollars. It costs you zero dollars. It's literally free. It takes about five seconds to install. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, you're just saving money. All you like, have to do is, is go to Honey. H-O-N-E-Y. Honey.com. 
slash drinking bros and that's it honey.com slash drinking bros and you're done it's free yeah, it's I, it's the best thing of all there time. is no fucking i haven't put it on my phone you're yet. you're not buying anything i haven't put it on my phone yet but i'm sure i will see i i sh- i'd like get bored and just like i'm gonna go buy something yeah and it's then i'll go to like amazon pa- i'll go to amazon pantry and just order water yeah. i just need to buy something now <laughs> But this makes it so easy. I mean, you don't have to do anything. It All is. you have to do is have it on there, go do your shopping, yep. and it'll fucking show you the coupons at the end. Yeah. So, uh, and typically, man, like uh, last time I used it, I got like twenty bucks off. I, it'll it'll range, man. It'll save you anywhere from fucking whatever coupons to are available. Fifty. Know, it's whatever. Sca- whatever's it's, out there. It's it, it it whatever coupons the company makes available. Mm-hmm. And then it scours the internet to find all the other ones, too. It's fucking great, dude. Go to honey.com forward slash drinking bros today. And again, this is just a fucking free service, man. Yeah. I'm not even selling you any, any goddamn thing here. Um, D'Anthony, the, the world is uh, getting weirder and weirder and weirder <laughs> by the hour and uh, day. Yeah. Um, all of the shit. Uh, politics is going to get ramped up. We talked about the NFL last week and... Uh, Sports possibly getting canceled this fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, all this shit is just <laughs> going to keep getting jammed into our faces over and over and over again. Uh, there is one positive story, and I'd like to get this kid on the show. Um, mm. He's from North Carolina. The uh, the kid that's running for Congress? Yeah, maybe? dude. Yeah. Uh, Madison <laughs> Cawthorn is his name. He's a veteran. Uh, he's running for the GOP House primary here in uh, North Carolina. Um, he is a 24-year-old real estate investment. He's a, he's a veteran. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's paralyzed. Uh, President Trump endorsed the other candidate, and so did uh, Ted Cruz um, in this election, and he won. Um, you know, were people afraid to go out and vote because of the coronavirus and shit like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. Um, but look, this this kid is young. He's savvy. This is this is what we talk about on the show all the time. It should be young people who are getting into office yeah. um, and trying I mean, to make a difference. <clears throat> That's how it worked on Naboo, right? Where mm-hmm. Princess Leia and her family came from. Yeah. Like um, you were a queen and a senator when you were young, and then you get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Uh, so he called for a runoff after he finished second place um, in a 12 candidate primary in early March. Uh, because they failed to get more than 30% of mm. the vote. Um, the the May runoff was delayed due to COVID. And, I mean, uh, that happens all the time. If, it, if there's like 15 people running and, and the top two people get 28 and 27%, they have a runoff. Yeah. That's just how it's got to be. And look, he's a Republican, and he, he, he does support Trump, uh, but Trump went for another candidate, maybe because they thought this candidate would be better suited for the uh, the actual the general uh, election, maybe, and maybe they, they just knew the November. one guy didn't know the other guy. Sometimes maybe. it works like that. Yeah, so. so sometimes it works like that. I know the media is trying to pin it against Trump, but it, this kid's already come out and said, look, I, I fucking love They're Trump. They're just trying to create division. That's all. Like th- This shit happens all the time in every single political season. It's mm-hmm. nonsense that they're even talking about it. Um, so he was paralyzed uh, from the abdomen down in uh, 2014 in a car accident. Mm. Um, he's got a great story. He's now a, a real estate entrepreneur and um, – this was really fucking cool to see. Uh, and I hope more young people get involved like this. And I know what you might be thinking is like, hey, man, isn't 24 too young? It is. 25 is, is the age that you have to be. However, uh, when this happens, he turns 25 in August. Yeah. So by the, the time the general <clears throat> election happens in November, he will be 25 years old. And uh, when people are that passionate to get into something and get in on their exact mm-hmm. age about it, I'm all for it because shit, man. I can't remember anybody else running this young. That's young. I mean, every, right? a lot of people talked about AOC being young. She was 28 when she got in. Mm. Um, and she, it looks like she won her, I mean, we'll know for sure when this airs, but we're recording this in advance. looks like she won her primary, so she's going to win that seat again. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, Two uh, more years of that bullshit. God, look, it's to be expected. When you get that famous... Your district is on the map and all that other shit. I think I called that. I was like, she'll be there for a while until she moves on to higher shit, which I'm sure she's going to yeah. uh, in 2024. But uh, I'd like to give this. I'd like to get this kid on the show. Um, yeah. So if anybody knows Madison Cawthorn, uh, reach out to him and, and tell him the Drinking Bros would love to have him. Uh, we, look, we have you know 9.2 million listeners. We'd love to get your story out there, man, and help you help you win. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, I, I think that would be awesome. So there is some positive stories, um, but then there's just a fucking shit ton of negative here uh, that are coming out. Um, and I don't know what's what's right or, or what's wrong here. Um, fucking De Blasio, like, how do these guys stay in office? 
it costs a lot of money. Some some places don't even have a provision for recalls, right? Right. In some places, it takes forever. Like I was uh, around for the Scott Walker recall in 2012 in Wisconsin, and it was a shit show. Millions and millions of dollars were spent, both by the government and by private organizations. It's a shit show to do that. Um, and what did it I, accomplish? Well, nothing because yeah. Walker won. Yeah. Uh, it, here, <laughs> it, it's funny the way it all worked out because everybody had this. There was this real progressive momentum to it, and then they brought in uh, uh, what's his name, Tom something, the mayor of Milwaukee, who had already run for governor like twice oh, yeah, yeah, and lost yeah. Yeah. every single time. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom Barrett, that's his name. Yeah, yeah so <clears throat> they brought. They were like, yeah, we fucking progressive movement, fucking in, intersectional and blah, blah, blah. We're, who's the oldest, whitest man I can find to run for this seat? Anybody, <laughs> anybody find the oldest, whitest man? Is he out there? Oldest, oh, there he is. Old and white. Come on, guy. Come over here and run for office because we have no creativity, I guess. None. None. I don't know what it is. And I don't know, by the way, I'm, I'm mixed on the VP candidate now. <laughs> I'm, I keep going back and forth with this. It's going to be Kamala somebody Harris. Somebody brought up, but somebody else brought up, brought up a great point about Kamala Harris is he's already got California. Yeah, I mean, the, that woman from uh, Georgia, that congresswoman or whatever. Not, not Georgia. Uh, the one who lost? You no, know, no. There's, 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 so there's two women, uh, by the way, who run MyBookie.com that we were betting on. Yeah, uh, who promo code drinking bros. Who is the other woman? That's a congresswoman. Deposits. Um, so they brought up Stacey Abrams, who lost, right? And they said she's in the running. And then uh, that the mayor, that's uh, oh no, Keisha Lance Bottoms. Lance Bottoms? No, it wouldn't be her. No, uh, I don't so think if the woman is a loser, that wouldn't really help. Like it doesn't matter. Like historically speaking, in elections, when you go after somebody to get that state, it's somebody that the state actually likes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Crazy, Sorry. Right? <laughs> uh, I don't know that there's a candidate out there that's going to give them a state. Like, I think they have Minnesota wrapped up already. Yes. So I don't know if Klobuchar is even, like, why? No. Why, why fucking have Karen? Well, she's, she stepped down already. So she stepped yeah, I know, down. I'm just saying. She's like, done. That, that one doesn't make any sense. You definitely have Massachusetts. Yeah, for Elizabeth Warren. So there's no point in doing that. Plus, she has – you can't have both people on the ticket have problematic race relations. Although that brings up uh, issues with Kamala Harris as well, because she was like a huge backer of the crime bill and uh, enforced the fuck out of it in California. So and she and, and look, I lived in California when she was there for yeah. all that shit. Um, her biggest thing was marijuana. She was sending all these people to jail for fucking yeah. marijuana charges. And it's like, dude, no one gives a shit. Do you know who goes marijuana. to jail for weed? Who? Not white people. No, not at all. <laughs> it's, it's not white people. It's, black. Yeah. it's always black people. Yeah. Uh, like Giorgio, did you go to jail for weed? Pri- ah! Prison. Prison or just like jail? I've, I've been, I got arrested for having a fucking joint on me when I was like 19 years old. I just paid a fine. Nobody, yeah, nobody cared. I still got a top secret security clearance too, so it's not that big a deal. Yeah. but like I'm, when I say jail, I mean I'm sorry, I meant prison. prison. Yeah. Like who's in prison for weed? It's not white people. <laughs> Very no. like white people are in prison for financial crimes and rape and murder and all the typical bullshit, but not for that petty bullshit. Yeah, sorry, unless yeah, it was crazy. a probation violation or something. Um. We got a little bit of breaking news here, um, but fuck, this won't air till next week, so um, eh, maybe it's <clears throat> maybe it's out, maybe it's not. Has everybody heard about uh, Jack Carr's movie getting picked up, the Terminal List, and fucking Chris Pratt's going to be in it? Yeah, there it is. Blamo, there it is. Blamo, big, dude, big fan of Jack Carr and Chris Pratt. Judge Ringer, that's amazing. Yep, um, that's amazing. Uh, he's he's fucking awesome dude and uh to, i I'm talking I about jack, jack his ability to r- crank out these because it's not it's easy to write this shit impossible too. dude i don't know how he's doing it i look i i limit myself to one a year yeah one a year it's got to be f- like emotionally and, and intellectually exhausting to put all that on paper it, exhausting and then and then the edit process afterward the edit process is brutal as well because then you're going back through picking out shit that you're yeah. like yeah does this advance the story or is this about the joke like he's got to have a great team with him has to if he's doing this on his own fuck man I that's know. that's uh, that's like a heroic I, I look I, i'd love to have jack on the show as well to, we to haven't had he's, he's he was out. on in like september of 2018 the last time or some shit it was a while back. it was a while ago yeah it was like but his whole life has changed I now think, oh, yeah, chris pratt yeah. does one of your books that's it um you're made forever. And I, people don't realize this, this portion of it. Because you think, oh, man, it's just a big sale for the movie and you get yeah. that movie sale. No. People will buy the books oh, yeah. forever. That's why they re-release the, the book time. with the movie cover yes. on the front of it. It'll uh, be with, Chris Pratt's face instead of 
Like, no offense, Jack, but come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chris Pratt, for fuck's sake. He's going to be on the cover of your book for, for the rest of your life. <laughs> for the rest of your life. I was yeah. in an airport uh, a couple of weeks ago coming back from Austin, and I saw a, a Lone Survivor book, and it had Mark Wahlberg on it. Oh, yeah. It's like, I mean, it, look, Chris Pratt is a very well-liked, very good actor who has experience in series movies before, right? Mm-hmm. So if, ter- if the first term of the list goes well, that there's a very good chance there's going to be three to five of those, right? Because there's he's writing books like they're going out of yeah, fucking style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be like Jack will never have to work again, no, ever, no. But he will because he can't stop himself. Yeah, like I don't. The other thing about him and how much he, writing he does is, I see him outside shooting every single day. Mm-hmm. Like man, that's he, he's set it up for himself where he can do that a little bit more easily than most folks. But still, like that that process takes so much out of you yeah i just don't know how he has anything left in the tank or if that's his one release of the day like you know maybe yeah because uh i like i I try to do research on like the top writers Mm -hmm. and how you're able to crank out you know a book a year or things like that like over and over and over again Mm -hmm. and still be considered great and uh it was the guy there was a guy here so when when i moved to wilmington they they were like hey you gotta look up the guy who wrote the note the notebook Mm -hmm. nicholas spark right and uh I looked at his fucking uh, bio and all the shit that he does, and like he hangs himself upside down from like uh, you know sleeps occasionally from like upside down. What like a fucking bat? Yes, Um, just to get blood flow and proper pressure. He's got masseuse. He's got all this shit. Hmm. He's got a specific writing times and all that other shit. Um, There was a woman who used to clean his house that I knew, and I was like, "What's his story in real life?" She's like, "Oh, he's super fucking weird." And I was like. You'd have to be to be cranking out that well, I mean, much content. We've all seen Hunter S. Thompson's schedule mm-hmm. for when he that, that yeah, yeah, that's yeah, his yeah. bunker writing schedule. <laughs> he wakes up at like fucking three p.m. and starts immediately getting fucked up. I love that and schedule. Then he eats lunch at seven p.m. Yeah, get, like eats a bunch of weird ass shit. Yeah, and then just comes back home, gets way more fucked up, and then he starts <laughs> writing at midnight and writes until like six a.m. That's the basically. best. Uh, that is the best time period to write. I will say that he's well, got yeah. it right. I, how do you do? 80 lines of cocaine and acid and everything else in between. So still have your hands lives. work correctly. <laughs> like he, and he's typing on the old school typewriter, too. Yes. Can you imagine that no. shit? There's no, no fucking way. I can't even get high in rights. The buttons are moving around. I can't do it. Like My mind's <laughs> got to be locked in or, or, or that's it. Um, but I, yeah, I'd be curious to get uh, Jack on and see how he's, he's cranking those out like mm-hmm. that. But yeah, you, you go through the process of all these guys. And like you take, I think it's uh, James Patterson or Tom Clancy. I forget which one. Um, those guys are the you know biggest of the biggest, yeah. right? Um, one of them, their son writes their books now, and they kind of give him feed him ideas, kind of like uh, Orson Scott Card when we, we had him on the show. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, you know, I'll I'll tell the ideas now, and somebody else will write them, and then I'll kind of curate them, and blah blah blah. Right. When you get to that age, <laughs> I think that's pretty much you have to at that point to maintain that pace. But uh, I feel like. Because every time I go into a bookstore and I'll look for one of my own, obviously, because mm-hmm. I'm a fucking narcissist, but uh, I, I'm always next to James Patterson, obviously, because our, book, our last names are back to back like that. And I feel like there's a new goddamn James Patterson book out every two months where I'm like, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> dude. Well, I mean, um, what's his nuts? Um, Vince Flynn mm-hmm. did it for years with those Mitch Rap books, one a year, every single year. And then when he died, What's the guy's name? Kyle, Kyle Mills mm-hmm. took over took writing over, yeah. him, um, and he writes one a year now. It's like, <sighs> man, this is like fucking. They started. I, I think there have been a couple years off because uh, Vince got sick a couple times. He eventually died, uh, but for the most part, it's been one a year when everything is going right mm-hmm. for eighteen or nineteen years now. That is yeah. a fucking lot of shit. That's brutal. Fuck that. I'm, I have no interest in doing that at all. No. Uh, not, not, none whatsoever. Because um, then you get into the thing of, of when to stop, too, when you're writing these series. Yeah. Like, like how to kill your character. You don't, yes. What you don't want to do is leave the audience hanging. No. Right? And that's why when Vince got sick, he was like, I need to find somebody to write these books yeah. into the future. Like, he felt a responsibility to the community, which is understandable. Like, you should at that point. So, yeah, I don't know. I, that's, that's a good question. I would like to hear Jack talk about that, too, because he's – because if everything goes well with this movie that's coming out, he this might turn into one of those. Like he might be the next Tom Clancy at that yes. point. You, know you never mean? know, dude. You really don't. Yeah. All it takes is it to catch on mainstream a mm-hmm. little bit, and Chris, there's nobody more mainstream than Chris Pratt. Um, right. 
So, I mean, he this could be huge for him and all of his future shit, too. So it'll be interesting to see how that, that shakes out. I think it's important as a writer to decide way in advance. Otherwise, you get stuck. So, like, after the, the St. James series, after the first one took off and I knew it was going to be multiple, I sat down and was like, all right, I mapped it out and I put a final date on it. And mm-hmm. the, the total was five books on that. Uh, the reason why I did that was one of my favorite series – when I was in LA was uh, lost. Mm. Love lost. Um, the problem <laughs> with it was during like seasons four through seven, it went off the fucking rails. Yeah. And it they jumped the shark for three straight seasons. Well, they didn't, yeah. they didn't know where they were going and have anything. And, and so <laughs> I, I had talked to one of the writers at a party or whatever. And I was like, dude, you know, they were like, Oh, so it's no race for lost. Mm. I was like, shit, let me ask you something. What the fuck happened there? Um, with it. Um, and he was like, uh, I guess, well, I can tell you what happened mm. because when things get successful, they will want more and more and more and more out yeah. of you until the end of time. Until you they say can no. bleed you dry. And he goes, the problem with it is, in a TV series in particular, is if, if everything is great, he goes, dude, you're on for years. And he goes, but sometimes you only consider that story to go for like three years. Yeah. He goes, now you're into yeah. eight years. <clears throat> um, and he goes, since we don't know when it ends, and most of it is based on ratings, uh, we'll just keep writing and you've got to come up with new storylines or whatever. But he goes, but then when it's the finale, then you end up have to tie a hundred storylines together. Mm. And that's why everybody gets disappointed in finales. So with loss, they had to go in finally into this, the, the network and say, Hey man, we need a, f- a finale to this. Mm. We need two more seasons and then wrap <laughs> it up. And even then it's that ending sucked to me. Yeah. And I was pissed I, off I, about I've it. never watched a single episode of lost. Uh, it's, it's really good. The first two seasons are really good. I'm not watching something. My, one of my favorite purgatory, man, it's just, uh, it's what you thought it was from like episode three. This, like, uh, God damn it. this, uh, show called John Doe mm-hmm. and it had, what's the dude's name from prison break? Not the skinny gay dude, but the beef guy, beefy guy. I don't know his name. Oh, yeah, Dominic Purcell. Yeah, that's yeah. it, Dominic Purcell, yeah. yeah. So he's he plays a guy that's been experimented on by the government or whatever the fuck, but you don't really find it out until later. I wouldn't say this, uh, except for it's like 15 years old, and they only did one season. It didn't get picked up for a new season, but I thought it was great. But it's yeah. just like Arrested Development. Like if Arrested Development had happened 10 years earlier, we would have gotten those three seasons and never heard from it again. But because all the actors were still kind of around and popular, for lack of a better phrase... Now we could they they started remaking them again, mm-hmm. but there's so many great shows that just like fucking fell off the face of the earth because the companies didn't market them well or people whatever the case is there's all there's always some kind of reason. Yeah, like let me let me ask you because you're the biggest. It's always Sunny Philadelphia fan I know. Yeah. and I by the way I love that show. I mm-hmm. think it's probably one of the greatest sitcoms of all time. Um, it's yeah, gigantic it's, gigantic fan. It it has never not been good to me. I don't know about you. Because they're in what? They're in season 15, 16 now? Uh, the next season will be 15. Woo. It's the longest running live action sitcom of, of all time. Of all time. Um, with those guys, I would be really curious to be like, hey, man, don't you just kind of want to end it on the highest? I mean, you've been great for 15 years. Like, <clears throat> um, When did those guys pull the plug? I, I don't know, man. Everybody's gone off to do their own individual projects. So Charlie Day has been in a number of movies. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Rob, uh, uh, by the way, I watched Rob McElhaney's new series on. Yeah, it's uh, great. It's funny as shit on Apple. The Mystic, is it Mystic Quest? Mythic Quest. Mythic Quest. Yeah, yeah, he's like a video game producer. Yeah, or whatever the fuck. It's funny as shit. I, I think mean, he's great. I think the show is okay. It needs more. They need more character development in season two for sure. They I need agree. more. They need better character actors. I think. Yeah. But the show itself, where they are right now, is really good. I think they need to bring in like somebody like Kamel Nanjiani, who's. Like a little off the beat, a little quirky, weird. Yeah. Funny, like a guy like that that's funny like that. Uh, because he's got the dickhead, the aloof, arrogant dickhead thing down, but you need that quirky, weird guy too. Mm-hmm. Um, but, anyways, that show was good. The Mick, I thought was really funny. I don't think it got the picked Mick up for a third season. It got I, canceled. I, I, the got first canceled, two seasons, yeah. I thought they were good. Um, and uh, obviously, <clears throat> uh, Glenn Howerton has AP uh, Biology or whatever the fuck the name of that show is. It's really good. It's him and Pat Oswald. It it's is funny good. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. So they've all gone off and done their own thing, and every one of those things were successful to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, I always go back to it's always sunny, which for me, where it's yeah. just like, yeah. It's all of them together. Yeah. So it's like, um, they've, they've all, I think they've all kind of quenched that thirst to do their own shit, and they're continuing to do that a little bit. I think they're going to keep doing that show until I, Danny DeVito dies. Probably. I, would like to, I would like to see it. Um, I think they're going to keep doing it until DeVito dies. 
Uh, I know they're all friends in real life, by the way. One well, of the, Rob and Caitlin are married. No, I mean all of them. So oh, yeah, I went to I went to a movie one night in L.A. and the entire cast of them walked. It was Danny DeVito. Mm. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, all four leads walked in together and were, they're I real, was like, "Oh shit!" You they're really friends good. In real life. They're good friends with uh, Rickety Cricket too. He's the he's Jimmy, actually yeah, yeah. he's the producer <laughs> of the show. He is yeah. And he's in the uh, new series. Yeah, he wasn't supposed to be that big of a character on It's Always Sunny, but it, that rickety cricket character is so goddamn funny. Oh, that was great. Uh, yeah, he's on. Uh, he's on. Yeah, the Mythic Quest show. Yeah, yeah. He's like their executive producer or some shit. Yeah, he's. The, they've all had individual success at this point, so I don't know what the impetus would be to cancel it and walk away. I don't either. Um, like it's free money at this point. Yeah, and with him, with Rob doing two shows and writing both shows, that's a bitch, man. I don't know how he's doing it. To be honest with you, uh, I don't, I don't know. know how he's doing it. What else is he gonna do? I don't raises? know how we got off on this rant, but it was fun. Yeah. Um, now, now it's time to get to the drinking bro of the week. Um, this one was submitted by Hunter Shaw from Ohio, who's been a drinking bro since mid 2017. Uh, he's nominating uh, his father, Philip Shaw. Uh, it says, my father served in Iraq twice, uh, Bosnia, Kosovo, etc. Uh, he enlisted in the Army at age 18. 11B was his MOS. Uh, got jobs uh, from the infantry. Uh, later on, he ran a prison. And uh, I just want to give him drinking bro of the week. Like a real prison or just like his own? It doesn't home. say. It runs out after Is that. Is he that guy in Columbus that had those? It runs out after that. No, it's I, like there, there's a... Uh, that's a fucking lot of stuff going on there. A lot, but here, here's the beauty of this: is when <laughs> these come in, sometimes like we we read them live on air, so mm-hmm. we don't we don't know. Um, but sometimes like there's misspellings or people get distracted yeah. and they just run off. Like this ended in a mid sentence. Mid sentence after later on he ran a prison, and it was like there is something else there, but I don't know what it is because there's no period at well, the end of it. You don't need one. <laughs> He's running a prison. It's obviously a men's period uh, prison because there's no periods. Nailed it. Yeah. Boom. Uh, mm. That'd be fun to run a woman's prison. No. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, I can't yeah. imagine the weird shit that goes on there. This orange is a new black thing. That's not how real prison is. Time to see the warden. <clears throat> Time to see the warden. Talk about your sentence. We could uh, drop off a couple of years if you're willing to, uh, you know, see the warden. See, I don't understand why the warden is from, like, the south in 1930. I don't either. I think it's Shawshank. I think I caught up in Shawshank on that one. Mm, well, that's that was in the 30s, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Was. Yeah. So, and it was a prison in Ohio. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Maybe the dad runs the Shawshank prison. Wouldn't that be a fucking nice house? Do? Is that a real place? Yeah, real prison in Ohio. It's in uh, Mansfield, Ohio. So, is that story real? No, no, story's not real. Stephen King wrote that. Mm. Um, it was a short story, and then it was turned into a movie. Uh, Stephen King's a fuck. He's another one, man. That guy's a fucking genius. How does he crank out that many? I don't know. He's a weird guy. He's a really weird guy. Um, yeah, creepy and pale in real life. I feel like if you walked into his house, it's probably like doll heads everywhere. It has to be. Yeah. Has to be. Even in the freezer. It's like, well, I was saving these. Why he never gets mentioned is one of the greatest <laughs> authors of all time. I have no idea. Because, dude, look at all the shit he's created. <laughs> Holy fuck. Um, like all the films. Dude. That come out of that. Guy's the, one of the most prolific authors of all time. He should definitely be mentioned in the greatest. Uh, Dan, He's fun, a, weird show, man. Yeah. We keep doing them every day. Everybody keeps asking if we're going to stop. Ah, not really. I don't really stop, feel like it. Stop doing what? Shows every day. Because we started doing this once the uh, pandemic started. What else am I going to do? seems like the pandemic is setting back in. So might as well stay with you every day, Monday through uh, Saturday. You know, The only day we're taking off is Sunday because uh, Dan um, goes to church then. So. Holy shit. <laughs> 80, 83 movies from Stephen King books. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That can't be true. It is true. It, go back to The Shining. It and It, it. Chapter 2 yeah. and then the new It. Uh, the Shining, Shawshank Redemption, The Mist, Stand By Me, Misery. TV movies. I mean, you name it, dude. The guy has done fucking a, a gajillion of them, man. There's, there's 83? Yes. Carrie, uh, Cujo, The Dead Zone, Christine. God damn, dude. Yeah. One of the most prolific authors. Children of the Corn, Firestarter, yeah, Maximum Overdrive, The Running Man, Pet Cemetery. Holy shit! How much money is he worth? I can't. Let's rob this dude. I honestly can't even dream up a Mm. total. Apt Pupil. That's a good fucking movie. You ever seen that? I have, man. It was a teen movie. I I haven't seen it in a long time. It's Um, uh, late nineties. Brian Singer did that one, so he 
He was doing a little touching. Yeah, he was. Doing a little touching over there. A little bit of touching. That's what Brian Singer does. Jared was at his house. Uncle Touchy's puzzle basement. That's a Pat Oswalt quote. Jared, by the way, didn't get touched at Brian Singer's house. Well, what does that tell you about a, yourself? It tells me, uh, well, that he's not young, <laughs> slim, and smooth because that's how Brian Singer likes it. Yeah. Uh, he's a weird guy. <laughs> Fun show, kids. Uh, rate us on iTunes. Give us a five star and a quick review. It helps scoot us on up the charts. But we're here with you <laughs> uh, Monday through Saturday. Savage Saturdays on Saturday. Uh, all of our shows from the media company are available on Drinking Bros Podcast on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. For Danthony, Danthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.